Hi everyone, bonjour à tous, it's Romy. I hope you like this little black skirt since today we are going to trace the basic skirt pattern for knitted fabrics, which means the basic skirt pattern used with stretchy materials only. It's a very easy pattern with no darts that requires four measurements, your waist, your hips, the distance between them, as well as the skirt's required length. And that's it. Then, using this basic pattern, it will be possible to create many different skirts and dress bottoms by simply changing the length, the feet and the ease. Mini, extra long, round, mermaid-like, straight or hampered, the only limit will be your creativity as well as the extensibility of your fabric. There are many different ways to trace a pattern and I picked this one for us. The most important thing is what we will do together in this video. Create a slopper, try it on your dress form or on yourself, fit it to perfection and finally transfer the modifications on our basic pattern that we will put safely away for our future creations. Alright, you know it all, let's get started! First we need to trace the middle front line, then at 90 degrees we'll trace the waistline. A second perpendicular line below will represent the hips line. The distance between them equals the distance between your waist and your hips, that is the fullest part of your body. Finally, we need to measure and mark from the waist down the desired length of our skirt and trace the hemline. So we have now traced the middle front line, the waistline, the hips line and the hemline. This distance equals the height of your hips and this one equals the finished length of your garment. Usually for basic patterns we place it slightly below the knees. Now let's focus on our hips curve. I'm going to try to film it a little bit closer. From the middle line we are going to measure and mark on the waistline our waist measurement divided by 4. From that point, we will simply add another point 1.5 cm above. Why? Because we are curved and nicely shaped creatures. <laughs> Same story for our hips. I divide my hips measurement by 4 and mark it on the hip line. From this point up, we are going to trace a short line of about 1.5 to 2.5 cm depending on your body shape and join everything together by hand or with a tracing tool in order to create the shape of our hips. I made mine quite straight since that's what my body requires but you can make it rounder like so. Don't panic, you will soon learn to know you better and we will have a fitting session later on this very video. Now to trace the waistline we need to start with what's called a small platitude. That's a very short line perpendicular to the side line that will allow perfect matching of the different pieces of the pattern. Right here 5mm will be enough. And then we just have to trace a smooth curve like so to create the waistline. Finally, since it's a basic pattern, we should make the bottom of our skirt completely straight. But I find a cut slightly narrower at the bottom much more elegant. So on the hemline, let's have again our hips measurement divided by 4, minus 2 cm for instance. It could be more or less depending on your taste, your body shape and the garment you wish to create. Take your time to perfect every line and bravo, we just made the front pattern of the skirt. Now let's work on the back. It's awfully easy, we just need to fold the paper wrong sides together along the middle front line that will be used as the middle back line as well. When you are done, just cut both layers together following the shape of the front piece and making sure that both layers stay perfectly folded in place while doing so. We just created a back piece identical to the front. We could get away with that by leaving it as is since we are using stretchy materials only. Personally, I prefer my fronts to always be slightly wider than my backs. This way, the side seams won't be visible when the skirt is being seen from the front. So watch carefully, we are going to move our middle line to the right side from 1cm and cut both pieces apart. 
Here is our front and our back. Don't forget to name both pieces so we don't mix them up later. I am now quickly tracing a pattern for myself in order to show you how quick and easy it is once you know the process. Basic patterns are so useful to then create exciting garments that fit you to the T. Learning how to trace them is like learning the ABC and then being able to read. In the future, you'll just have to grab your perfectly fitted pattern out of the drawer to place it on top of the folded fabric, a few scissors cut, a few stitches and voila, you'll get a brand new skirt. Tempted? I recommend then that you stick to the end of the video. Let's place this black fabric wrong side facing us with the stretchiest side placed horizontally and the less extensible side placed vertically. With Taylor's chalk, we are going to trace the middle front line and use it as a guide to position the front pattern of the skirt. Then we are going to trace all around the piece using a ruler for straight parts if needed. Don't forget to add two little marks to indicate the position of the hip line. Then you just have to turn the pattern and to repeat the same process to trace the other side of the front of our skirt. With a contrasted colored thread we are going to retrace the middle front line and the hip line marks. With yet another color, we are going to retrace the shape of the piece, making sure to start a new thread for every single side. This step might feel unnecessary for you, but trust me, please. <laughs> the thread is visible on both sides of the garment and won't be erased at the first fitting. You will gain precious time for the fitting and the quality of your garment will be enhanced accordingly. Don't be afraid to make the middle line longer in case we would need to raise the waistline or to lower the hemline. We are also retracing the marks for the hip line and we could even trace the whole line. These marks will serve for a perfect coupling of the pieces together. They will also serve as guides to check the balance of the garment during the fitting session. We have traced the middle front line as well as the hip marks and we are now going to trace the shape of our front piece. Like the middle front line, I will start tracing a little bit before and I'll stop slightly after the chalk's tracing with a few back stitches. Also a little tip here in order to keep the elasticity of the fabric and prevent the stitches to break when trying to put the skirt on is to stretch the fabric as we sew, which will give the stitches some ease. The tracing will still be visible and accurate, but it won't break. Once we reach the end of the hemline, we will go a little further then, before stopping the thread and taking a new one to trace the next side of our piece. Voila, I am done with the front and in the last minute I did change my mind and decided to also trace the hip line. Even though today's pattern is extremely basic, I'll show you why and how to use it for the balance of the garment during the fitting. It's a great opportunity to learn the proper technique for more advanced future creations of yours. Alright, now it's finally time to take out the scissors, but don't be too excited and leave a good seam allowance all around to allow inevitable modifications on your skirt during the fitting session. Of course, don't forget to repeat the same process for the back and to mark with the thread your front, which is slightly wider. Time now to start the construction of the skirt. Place both sides right sides together and align every marks together. With yet another color, we will baste our skirt, one side, then the other. Check often that your basting is properly aligned with the tracing of both layers.
If it's not the case, like right here, take out a few stitches and try again. My first side is basted, the second as well. We are now going to turn the garment inside out and sew down the seam allowance on both sides with a few wide and quick basting stitches. Of course, if you feel lazy today, you could skip this step, but if you are working for a client, you will have a better view of the skirt's curve and fit, and your client won't be too scared since he probably isn't used to seeing a muslin or a yet unfinished garment. And without further ado, let me introduce you to this cute little dress form that I bought for Christmas for our YouTube channel here and whose measurements are about half of mine. It will be so useful and nice to work and film with it. Let's put the skirt on with the middle front and back lines perfectly vertical and the waistline sitting properly on the dress form's waist. So, besides the fabric's annoying tendency to curl a little bit, the first thing to notice here is the side seam pointing towards the back slightly. To change that, let's just raise the front of the skirt a tad. Because of that, we will have to lower the waistline on the front piece. Now, for the back, all is good, but a little extra ease that we'll take in the side seams. C'est parti! Quickly unstitch the basting that maintains down the side seam allowance, undress the little lady, turn the skirt outside out, and before putting it back on, look where your mark is so as not to mix up the front and the back. Oh, and what do you think? Should I give this cute dress form a name? Give me some ideas in the comment section, please. Merci! Alright, you can now open your eyes, the little lady is dressed. The lines are well placed, horizontally and vertically. Without changing that, I raised the front of the skirt to rectify the side seam direction. Still keeping the middle front and back lines perfectly horizontal, we are going to tighten the skirt by readjusting the hip curve with pins. First, we must pin in place those lines, and please, if you are working on yourself, as we'll see in a minute, I highly recommend you pin the fabric to a bodysuit instead of your skin. Alright, the skirt is now well fitted and we need to trace the new waistline. Remember, we had to raise the skirt up a little in order to have a perfectly vertical side seam. If you do these adjustments on yourself, I highly recommend you use a piece of elastic to tie around your waist on top of the skirt. You'll feel at once where to position it and if it sits properly on your natural waist. Then, you'll only have to use it as a guide to check whether the skirt's waistline is correct or whether it needs some alterations. I'd like to show you now what to do in case the skirt is too tight. We need to unstitch first the basting without confusing it with the tracing of the pieces. It's really helpful to use different colors. And we are going to retrace a new curve with pins, making sure to give our lovely body enough ease to breathe. And of course, whether we need to make the skirt bigger or smaller, we might only need to give more ease or take in more fabric on the front piece or on the back piece, so not necessarily on both pieces together. A dress form is very useful if you own one to your exact measurements, but nothing beats a fitting on yourself in front of the mirror. So I'd like to show you now how to go about trying and fitting the skirt on yourself. If like me your back has a tendency to be arched, you will have to take in some excess fabric around here to get rid of this not so pretty wave. Just raise the fabric so it lays perfectly flat and place a pin at waist level. You will use it as a guide later to retrace your waistline. When the fitting session is complete, we just have to retrace with a thread the new lines temporarily marked with pins and then to transfer these modifications on the pattern and on the other side of the skirt. Here is my new hip line and my new waistline. I am going to position on my skirt the front pattern and pin it using all the guides and marks. 
On the table now, you might want to play something thick and soft like fleece or a soft laptop case for instance and grab a tracing wheel. Turn your skirt and follow the new lines with the tracing wheel, giving a good bit of pressure with this tool. We have traced the new curve of our hip, now let's trace the new waist. Remember, we only changed it on the front piece for the little dress from Lady. In my case, for my own skirt, I only changed the waistline on the back piece. Take the pins out and ta-da! The new line is here, we just have to follow the little holes made by the tracing wheel on the paper. Before I forget, I will also transfer the new curve on the back piece using the same technique. We can cut the back piece, it doesn't need any additional alterations today. And as for the front, we will simply retrace the new waist and cut it out. A last tip for the waist, check that the line starts at 90 degrees to begin with and then curves nicely. This way you'll get the perfect waist shape once we'll cut the fabric on fold. And voila, this tutorial is coming to an end. I'm aware that it was quite long and I'm grateful that you kept me company all along. Bravo, you just made a basic pattern that fits you like a glove. It's precious, keep it with your ID and your jewels in a safe and secret place for your future creations. Bye bye. A bientôt.